Welcome everyone. In this lecture, we will be looking at the poem Dear Child written by Walter Odin. We'll be doing a critical analysis, a line by line, a line analysis of the poem. So the poem starts like this. In your splattered face, I see the different faces of our city. Some bright, clean and wealthy, others dull, dirty and poor. So in the first stanza itself, we get an idea that the poet is talking about a boy who is living on a street, a young child who is living on the street. So in your splattered face, I see the different phases of our city. So it's about the appearance of the child. The child is very dirty. There, there is dirt on his face. And here the poet is saying that by looking at your face, I can see the disparity that is existing in this world, in the city. You know, you you represent that person who is struggling on the streets and the people passing by on cars, living in these high buildings. They represent the wealthy. So in your face, I can see the difference, the different places or different people, different category of people living in the city. Some bright, clean and wealthy. So some are bright in the sense they have a very affluent life. They have a very prosperous life. They, they are very clean. They are very wealthy. Others dull, dirty and poor. So it is this, these words represent this child living on the street. So looking at your face, I can understand how the society is divided. People who have wealth and people who are so poor. By looking at your face, I can understand this. The poet continues, you roam the concrete jungle, peopled with cars, buses and lorries, like a hen combs the dirt, looking here and there for a kindred soul from whom to pluck a coin or two. So the poet is talking about the boy and saying that I can understand how you are struggling to survive in this world, how you are finding it very difficult to survive just to exist. You're finding it very difficult to exist in this world. I can see you roaming around the concrete jungle. So it's it's a visual representation that the poet is giving us. A picture is being set by the poet. We have an image of a poor child who is wandering on the streets, begging on the streets. And this poem is not just about an African country. It is about the whole world. Even when we look from our cultural perspective, our uh, our country, we can we will be able to visualize such an image. So here the poet is creating such an image in our mind and saying that there's a young boy wandering in the streets, begging in the streets just to survive, just to exist. So I can see you roaming around in the concrete jungle, people with cars, buses and lorries. So people are so busy in their hectic life, they are traveling in their luxurious cars. Some are traveling in the buses, uh, some are going in lorry. So vehicle is going, uh, passing by here and there. And you, what are you doing? Like a hen combs the dirt looking here and there for a kindred soul from whom to pluck a coin or two. So what are you doing? You are like a hen. Here there's a comparison being made by the poet. He is comparing the child to a hen who is combing in the dirt to get some food. So you can, you know how the hen is. We, can, we have an image of the hen uh, trying to find something to eat from the soil. So similarly, the child is walking around here and there begging in the streets, you know, looking for some kindred soul, some generous soul who would give him a coin or a two to buy something and eat. So he's just wandering here and there, expecting a kindred soul, expecting a generous soul to come towards him and hand him some money so that he can buy food. Dear child, fighting over leftover chips and rotting bread, does your absent father know? Care you slept in the dustbin covered with the blanket of refuse. So here the child uh, is presented as an orphan as well. So the child is wandering in the streets and the poet is asking, dear child, does your father know? You know, does your father know that you don't have a place to stay? You don't have a roof over your head. Does he know that you are sleeping in the dustbin? Is he aware of it and how you are fighting over uh, leftover chips? Maybe you find some food leftovers on the street or on, or in the bin and you 
children like you are fighting over it and trying to get hold of it does your father know about this you know you are fighting over a, a rotting bread or you know leftover chips is he aware of the struggles that a child like you is going through covered with the blanket of refuse so blanket of refuse it has a literal meaning meaning as well as uh, the poet is also trying to say that how the child has been abandoned by his family you know left out by his father is not his father does not care about him does not bother about him if he is you know struggling to find food or not so that is the image presented by the uh, poet does your poor or whoring mother know the love comfort is from fellow parking boys and girls so your mother again uh, here the poet is trying to make an impression uh, that his mother the child's mother is a prostitute on the streets and again the mother does not care for the child the child has been abandoned by both the parents and so the poet is asking does your mother know that you know for you the only people that take care of you are boys like you or girls like you the, those children who are on the streets does your father know about it does your mother know about it so the poet has a lot of concern for this young child child adult your silent misery is of an assumed usuality no questions are raised in parliament your quota is budgeted in charity homes no public officials conscience suffers when the city askaris chase you off parking bays like a pilfering rat so the poet by talking about this boy this tragic situation of the boy and children like this young child is suffering in the street and the reason behind this is the corruption or um, the lack of attention shown from the officials to uh, towards these children so the poet is saying you know your silent misery there is a reason behind the silent misery it is not your fate you cannot blame your fate for this but the reason behind this is no one is raising the people in power there are people in power who rule the country who rule the city they can raise their voice but they fail to do it they are not at all bothered by the condition that you or children like you are going through so there are quotas you know assigned for children on the streets there are charity works being done for children on the street but no one is bothered to make sure that it is being done in the right manner and that is the reason why you and children like you are suffering on the streets you know no one cares no public officials conscience suffers conscience suffers so here the poet is trying to say that even uh, no public official seems to be bothered about the situation and you know when they are being chased out by security guards or you know when they are sleeping on this private parking lanes and all how they are being chased by the security guards no one cares you know no one is bothered the people in power are not bothered of taking care of you so they are treated these children are treated like pilfering rats and chased away but no one cares about it no one wants to know what is happening to these children struggling on the streets child i have in the right heart courage to tell you to your face weep not dream not ask not what a cozy home a responsible authority might have been we all stand rebuked so here the poet is so if we can understand the pain the struggle of the poet how much he is affected by this whole situation and we can find that the poet is saying you know please don't ask me you know i don't have the courage to tell you i can see that you know you might be expecting some words of hope from me but that is not happening that that is not something you should be expecting i have in the right heart courage i don't have heart i don't have the courage to tell you looking at your face and telling you that you know everything will be all right i can't give you hopes i can't give you hope or you know it's not possible i can only tell you that you should not cry but at the same time you can't dream of a better life because that is not happening in the corrupt world it is not happening in the world out there it's not going to happen and we all every individual is suffering by the corruption the uh, corruption of the government and that is what the poet is 
telling here so he is not trying to give a hope to the child he is asking the child not to dream for a better life because that is not happening anytime soon some of the major themes that we can find in this poetry is rich versus poor corruption and class difference so as the po poem starts itself the poetry starts itself we get an understanding in the initial lines uh, we are given a picture of a poor child so uh, about the face appearance of the child that is what is described to us so in the first stanza itself that contrasting contrasting image is being presented the contrasting image of the rich and the poor and later on it moves on to corruption the poet is saying that you know there are quotas designed for you charity uh, charity uh, charity is there assigned for children like this on the street but nothing is happening there is the uh, people in power are not ready to voice this in the parliament that is a, uh, that is an example for corruption happening then the class difference that is also clearly evident it is very similar to the first theme mentioned rich versus poor and the first stanza talks about it as well so this was a line by line analysis of the poem uh, dear child by written by a poet so here as i mentioned it's a very dis a very disturbing and touching poem and it is not just about one society that the poet is trying to talk about but it is an image that is present throughout the world so that is the, that is all in the lecture thank you